the news starts with breaking news. Breaking right now, Mayor Bill Peduto just introduced new police reform changes in the wake of recent protests that ended with clashes with officers. The mayor has called for two investigations into how police responded to protests, and the new reforms take effect right now. Let's get right to Channel 11's Rick Earl outside the city county building with the breaking details. Rick. Yeah, Gordon, the mayor today endorsing a number of those police reforms and also addressing that controversy involving the use of police force at that protest in East Liberty on Monday night. Now, the mayor again today reaffirming his support of proposed legislation that bars police from using deadly force during arrest unless there's an, Im an imminent threat. And he said Pittsburgh police will receive additional implicit bias and de-escalation training. He is now demanding legislative reforms to give local governments more power to discipline and fire police officers. Now, the mayor also said he had concerns about conflicting reports of police force at that protest Monday night. Protesters, of course, said they did nothing wrong and police fired bean bags, tear gas, and smoke at them. Police, meanwhile, said protesters started it all by throwing rocks in bottles and failing to disperse after repeated warnings. Now, the mayor yesterday called for the Office of Municipal Investigations and the Citizens Police Review Board to investigate. There's enough of a concern in order to be able to call for an independent investigation, but I will wait until the investigation is completed before I uh, take action with it. Uh, my concern is just that there is a difference between what was told to command staff and what actually happened on the ground. Yeah, and the mayor went on to say that some of the video he's watched and the witness accounts are different than the police version. And that, again, is why he's calling for two independent investigations to investigate what happened out there Monday night, as well as those police reforms he's now endorsing. That is the very latest reporting live down at City Hall tonight. Rick Earl, Channel 11 News. Storm Tracker Doppler 11 radar tracking a few showers and we have the chance for storms again today. Some of them could be strong. Yeah, let's head over to meteorologist Danielle Dozier in Severe Weather Center 11. Danielle. Good afternoon. Storm Tracker Doppler 11 radar. We do have a few showers that are moving into Lawrence County. Once again, Newcastle heads up heavier downpour headed your way coming in from the west. Temperatures are in the upper 70s and close to 80 degrees in many locations already. It's a very humid afternoon with mid upper 60s dew points. Day planner shows the high temperature up to near 81 today. Partly sunny to mostly cloudy. We'll have that chance for some showers and thunderstorms as you guys mentioned this afternoon and I've been updating our storm tracker maps. I'm going to put those together and have those for you and talk about the severe weather threats coming up in just a few minutes. Breaking news right now. Police have arrested a man accused of planting homemade bombs in the bushes outside of PNC Plaza downtown. That's just next to the Fairmont Hotel on Liberty Avenue. Police say they found the backpack with three bombs inside on Monday and then found surveillance video that they say shows my, Matthew Mikowitz leaving the backpack there on Sunday. The paperwork was just filed overnight, and our team is going through the details now and working to find out more. Coming up for Channel 11 News at 5. The latest on a deadly home invasion. Police say a homeowner shot and killed an intruder in Brentwood. We first followed this as breaking news last night on 11 at 11, and Channel 11's Mike Holden takes us through where the investigation stands. Allegheny County Police are actively working this case and trying to piece together what went wrong. Meantime, neighbors in Brentwood say this deadly home invasion is absolutely devastating for their community. Channel 11 followed police and watched from a distance as they surrounded this Brentwood apartment. Officers were called to West Bellcrest Avenue right around 10 o'clock last night. Investigators say the 71-year-old man and 62-year-old woman who lived there called for a reported deadly home invasion. When officers got there, they found a 38-year-old man dead on the sidewalk outside of the apartment. Police say through their investigation, they determined the 38-year-old man confronted the homeowner outside. The homeowner 
went back into the apartment. That's when police say the man followed him into the property. The homeowner grabbed a gun and shot at the man at least three times. He eventually tried running from the home before he collapsed outside and passed away. Neighbors called this a sad situation. I was in the house, but my husband and a friend, they heard four gunshots, maybe three from what I understand. Um, and then all of a sudden, like within two minutes, the cops were here. Allegheny County police are working this case and asking anyone with any piece of information to come forward. We're going to check in with them throughout the course of this day and bring you the latest updates for Channel 11 News starting at 5 o'clock tonight. Reporting this afternoon outside of Allegheny County Police Headquarters, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. Police are asking for tips into a double shooting in North Braddock that left a teenager dead. Chapter 11 was over Baldridge Avenue yesterday afternoon. We're told 19-year-old Damon Scott was killed. Another young man remains in the hospital. Anonymous calls can be made to the county tip line. Family, friends, and supporters of George Floyd will honor his memory today in the first of three cities. A memorial will get underway in just under two hours in Minneapolis. The Reverend Al Sharpton will deliver the eulogy. NBC's Jay Gray is in Minneapolis with a closer look at what will be a very emotional ceremony. Hey there, preparations continuing right now for the memorial service, which will be here on the North Central University campus and in that worship center, which is just behind us. Floyd's family, his friends, his loved ones, they'll gather there just across the street in a huge park. Thousands expecting to gather to pay their respects as well during this service. Uh, look, it all comes after three more Minneapolis police officers were charged in Floyd's death, and it's the start of what will be a series of uh, public and private services this weekend in North Carolina, a public memorial. That's where Floyd was born. And then starting next week, Monday, a public viewing in Houston, followed by a private funeral there on Tuesday. And Houston is where Floyd uh, grew up, spent many years before moving here to Minneapolis. So it's the beginning of what's going to be a very emotional, uh, very somber time for a lot of people, not only here where Floyd died, but uh, across the country as well. That's the latest from here in Minneapolis. I'm Jay Gray. Back to you now. NBC News will air George Floyd's memorial service at 2 this afternoon here on Channel 11. And at 10 o'clock tonight, Lester Holt will anchor a special report called America in Crisis. That's followed by 11 at 11. We are hearing about more protests being planned over the next few days. Allegheny County leaders assure us those protests will not stop us from entering the green phase of reopening. This map shows nearly all of southwestern PA going green tomorrow. And while this is an important step as we look to get back to normal, those protests have some people concerned. Health officials are prepared for a possible uptick in cases, but they really want people to remember with everything else going on, we are still living with coronavirus. The county executive and health department director are reminding the public that COVID-19 is still out there. There is no cure, no vaccine, urging everyone to continue with social distancing, wearing a mask, hand sanitizing, and being mindful. Fortunately, the number of new cases has been trending down. Some have also been concerned about crowded protests happening across our region where social distancing has at times been limited. Health officials say it's been encouraging to see protesters in many cases wearing masks. As we move into the green phase, the health department is ready to respond if needed. We've been preparing for a rise knowing that we are going green. Um, we haven't really changed those plans. We have a lot of ability to increase the numbers of case investigators and contact traces to address any rise that we see. Um, and so we're not making any specific changes as a result of the protests. Health officials were asked if protesters should get COVID-19 tests. The response, if you're concerned you might have been exposed, then you certainly can get one, but you're encouraged to wait four to five days from the possible exposure. Breaking right now, Allegheny County has just announced 13 more people have died from the coronavirus, and we are told that all but one of those patients were linked to long-term care facilities. All of them passed away last month. The county is also reporting 13 new cases since yesterday and two more hospitalizations. 
There is confusion over the number of coronavirus deaths at two local nursing homes. One is Kane Community Living's Glen Hazel location. The state health department says 43 residents have died there. That's according to our partners at the Trib. But Allegheny County, which runs the facility, says only 18 residents have died. The state gets its numbers straight from Glen Hazel, so it's unclear why those numbers don't match. The State Department of Health did not give an explanation. Numbers for Loyal Hannah Care in Derry Township also don't match. The facility says that 11 residents have died of the virus, and the state says 21 have died. We have a clearer picture of the outcome of some of the local races in Tuesday's primary. Pittsburgh controller Michael Lamb has won the Democratic nomination for state auditor general. He was the only candidate from Western PA on the ballot. He'll take on Republican Timothy DeFore in November. And an upset in the race for House District 20. Emily Kincaid, a Pittsburgh attorney, beat incumbent Adam Ravenstall, who has held that seat for 10 years. For a complete decision, 2020 coverage, head to the WPXI News app. A bill designed to give business owners more flexibility and time to use loan money will now head to President Donald Trump's desk for his signature. Channel 11 Serena Marshall takes a closer look at the Paytech Protection Reform Bill. Good afternoon. Business owners had complained that the PPP was overly restrictive and they needed more flexibility as COVID continued to impact their companies. In the original rule, those who received funds could not use more than 25% for costs outside of payroll or they wouldn't be eligible for loan forgiveness. This legislation softens that to say 60% must be used for payroll and 40% can go towards other costs. It was a bipartisan House bill which passed the lower chamber almost unanimously last week and the Senate by voice vote yesterday. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Business owners had also complained they were being forced to rehire employees before they were allowed to reopen. This fix now hopes to solve that, giving business owners more time to use those emergency funds from eight weeks to now 24 weeks. Reporting from outside Washington, I'm Serena Marshall, Channel 11 News. For the first time in decades, the Steelers will not hold training camp in Latrobe. The hotels get hit, the, the stores get hit. What it means for businesses already struggling because of COVID-19. First, though, America in crisis. How do you talk to your kids about racial tensions and protests? Still tracking a few showers in Lawrence County. I'll have updated tracking on those and the thunderstorms that are in the forecast later today. Channel 11 covers weather everywhere you live. And we have the experience to get it right. We know the unique weather patterns across our neighborhoods. That's why it can be raining in Beaver County. While it's dry in Westmoreland County. Weather coverage you can count on.
news is happening near you, Channel 11 is there. Aliquippa, Coriopolis, Moon. We cover news everywhere you live. That's what makes Channel 11 News different. We're in McCandless, Cranberry, Butler. For news from where you live, watch Channel 11 News at 5. Watch David Johnson and Peggy Finnegan on Channel 11 News at 5. We're human, just like you. And we deserve to live. Hundreds surrounded the East Liberty Presbyterian Church yesterday to honor victims of violence and to call for peace. People of all ages, races, and backgrounds held signs and eventually gathered for prayer on the cathedral steps. We saw parents with their kids at that protest, and that got us wondering, what is the best way to talk to your kids about what's going on? Tania Rogers explores how a few families are handling that tough conversation. This is Olaf, and this is Sven. They're both named after from Frozen, the movie. The Kana family enjoys spending time together in their backyard. They also like having tough conversations about the latest unrest in our country. When I was looking at her phone, I saw Mr. Floyd in the search bar, and I knew there was no way that she had not seen the video. And that really made me think, there is no reason to hide them from it. You can't hide them from it. These conversations need to be had. You don't know what it's like as much as you th think you do, or as much time as you think you can spend with someone. Um, I think that it's it's we can sympathize but we can't entirely understand and that's where we're gonna have to really change that narrative when I see things happen like this I am definitely um, urged to use my voice because as a communications major that's what I was taught to do Instagram Facebook post may be heartfelt and which I'm sure it is that's not gonna translate into what's the newest you know legislation or policy that's going to help fix situations like this it's a tough conversation and it's hard to explain and it's it's hard to find the right words even as adults so when you're explaining it to an eight-year-old, it's tough, but you can't ignore it because then that only adds to the problem. It's not fair. Understanding that people are in pain. We move forward by people who are in power listening. Listening to me, but most importantly, listening to this generation. At the end of the day, there has to be real change from the bottom up local government, state government, federal government, policing has to change. I'm balancing between heartbroken and angry and I'm 17. That shouldn't be something I have to do after I just graduated high school. And I'm disgusted by what's going on, but it no longer surprises me. Families impacted by what's happening around the country. Experts say that one of the most important things to do is just start the conversation because not talking about a tough subject may send a message to your kids that what they're feeling isn't right. More than $100,000 worth of counterfeit items are now in the hands of Customs and Border Protection officers in Pittsburgh. Nearly 4,700 fake remotes, 97 fake Apple AirPods, and 20 fake lightning charging cables were found. They arrived from Hong Kong, and they were headed to addresses in Butler County. Always buy from an authentic source to avoid falling victim to this kind of scam. A bad start to the day for a driver on 279. Check it out. Their SUV caught fire just past the Hazlitt Street exit and right before McKnight Road this morning. A lot of flames and smoke, but no one was hurt. Frightening moments last night as an earthquake rattled part of Southern California. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, oh, my God. oh, we're having an earthquake. Um, I'm shaking here. The 5.5 quake hit around 9.30 our time. This is video of a Ridgecrest City government meeting as the earthquake hit. Many reported feeling the quake in Los Angeles and Orange Counties. And as far as San Diego, there was no major damage reported, though. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Well, good afternoon. What a beautiful sunrise we had out there this morning. This picture coming in from Joe. And you can see the beautiful colors. And if you missed it, I wanted to share this with you. The orange and the yellow colors there even had some pinks and purples. This one from Mindy out in Indiana. Just gorgeous start to the day. Very warm and very humid out there. Here's our radar. Heavy showers are moving through Lawrence County. We've got some heavier rain that's moving into the Newcastle area as we speak. Here we go. We've got plain growth.
Grove at 1237, Slippery Rock 1246. 79 in Greensburg right now, double sevens in Pittsburgh, Butler and Indiana. It's near 80 in Washington. We are going to get into the lower 80s this afternoon. If you're planning on hitting the pool here in the Pittsburgh area, I do it now because we have showers and storms on the way. Of course, you're going to want to wait until Channel 11 News is over, but you get the idea. Showers and storms are back in the forecast uh, later on today, and we are expected to see some sunshine, some clouds, kind of a little bit of a mix in spots. So the UV index forecast is 6. It's still high, even though it's not quite as high as we've seen it in the past, because we do have a little more cloud cover, but the burn time is still 25 minutes. Sunscreen, sunglasses, and hats in order if you're spending some time outside today. Severe weather impacts for today. Any storms that do develop this afternoon will be capable of producing locally heavy downpours and localized flooding. So we are looking at the potential that these showers and storms kind of move over the same spots, damaging winds, and then perhaps some uh, isolated instances of hail, something we'll be tracking closely. I want to do let you know, I want to let you know, that is, that the model data has been having a really hard time these last two days of pinpointing exactly when and where these storms will be taking place. And here is the, the key that I'm looking at here. So 1220 right now, 12. 30 is the timestamp, and you can see it doesn't even have those showers up in Newcastle. So it's been, again, having a hard time uh, depicting where things are happening. But what we do expect is showers and storms are going to be starting to flare up with the heating of the day. And we've got two different things we're watching in the atmosphere. We've got a front that's been hanging around to the north, and we also have a, a disturbance that's going to be coming in that's going to be kind of helping to aid in the storm development this afternoon when you factor in the heating and the moisture of the day. So you can see the ultimate timeline. Most likely from the mid afternoon hours until the evening hours is going to be our greatest timing of the potential storms that will be coming into the area. You can see a lot of red colors showing up on that map, so we are expecting to see those heavier downpours as well with that lightning. So you're going to want to stay updated. Download our Severe Weather Team 11 app. It's free for your smartphone, and it'll keep you up to date on any potential warnings that could come out today. 84 on Friday, isolated thunder showers. Morning rain on Saturday, giving way to a beautiful weekend. I've got an update to your humidity forecast. And we'll also talk rainfall forecast as well as we head into the end of the week. Coming up in the next half hour. We told you yesterday at noon the Steelers will not be spending their summer training at St. Vincent. And we have people coming from other countries, other, other states, just into small town Latrobe. The big hit for more than just local businesses. There was this outpouring of love, like, wow, I can't believe you guys are doing this for us. Local students couldn't walk at graduation what the community is doing to support them. We've all slowed down, hunkered down to keep our distance, and the weather's helping to hold it together. It's getting us through our day our chance to get outside. So while we're all figuring out our new normal, one thing you can always count on, Severe Weather Team 11. We're here. Or here. Forecasting your weather. When you need to get outside for some fresh air, or you need to plan an indoor activity. We'll be here to keep you safe at home because we're Severe Weather Coverage You Can Count On.
When you want news from where you live, watch Channel 11 News at 5. Another sure sign of summer, the Allegheny County Health Department is treating catch basins with pesticides starting today. The goal is to stop mosquito breeding to cut the risk of West Nile virus. The health department is treating about 10,000 catch basins from today through Wednesday. Some of the biggest names in the poultry industry are facing price-fixing allegations. A federal grand jury indicted senior executives from two major U.S. chicken producers Wednesday, including the CEO of Pilgrim's Pride and its former VP. They're being accused of conspiring to fix prices and rig bids on broiler chickens. Those are the chickens sold to grocery stores and restaurants. Neighbors in the Snow Rock School District are giving seniors a graduation to remember, even though their ceremony was canceled. A Snow Rocks alum started a campaign called Adopt a Senior. More than 500 people joined in and collected enough stuff for three gift baskets for every student. That's 86 kids. There was this outpouring of love, like, wow, I can't believe you guys are doing this for us. Well, I think with all the hate going on in the world and attention, I, I kind of want to be the guy that, you know, spreads love and kindness. It brings everybody together and makes us feel special. It just makes each individual senior feel special that they made it. The gift baskets are going to be delivered today, and a parade will start at 6 tonight so that the community can help the seniors celebrate their graduation. It'll be nice to get back to some type of normal. Most of our area will transition into the green phase after midnight. We're finding out what normal will look like in local restaurants. Plus coming up, I'll show you who has the greatest risk of seeing a severe thunderstorm later today. You're streaming WPXI now. Channel 11 expands its streaming live newscasts. When other stations are national, Channel 11 News is local right here at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. on WPXI now.
put on Channel 11 Morning News, there is a team that has been working all night to get you the news you need. The news doesn't stop. We don't stop. As a mom, I know your morning is busy. We're going to give you everything you need from the breaking news desk to weather and traffic. When you walk out that door, you're prepared. Pittsburgh's chief meteorologist, Stephen Cropper, tracking the weather in your neighborhood. Storm Tracker Doppler 11 radar tracking showers in some spots, and there is a threat of thunderstorms again today. Meteorologist Danielle Dozier is tracking the timing in Severe Weather Center 11. Danielle? Yeah, we have some showers that are still ongoing up around the Newcastle area in Lawrence County, so some heavier downpours there. Today, we are looking at temperatures climbing into the lower 80s once again, so it's going to be a warm and it's already a humid day. We do have that threat for thunderstorms coming in by mid afternoon and really continuing into this evening, and that uh, threat for severe thunderstorm is really for the entire area but isolated in coverage so not everyone is going to get in on thunderstorms or severe weather today but it is definitely a threat where we are looking at the potential for some locally heavy rainfall some localized flooding damaging wind gusts in the primary uh, threats of the thunderstorms and then some isolated hail is possible but uh, really the top two I think out of the strongest storms for today still to come we'll take a look at the rainfall forecast how much we could see today plus we'll take you all the way out through Saturday, which is uh, how long we expect that rain to continue. I'll show you that coming up. The state health department has released an updated report on coronavirus cases. The department has learned of 537 new cases statewide and 75 more deaths since yesterday. Locally, we told you the Allegheny County Health Department learned of 13 additional deaths. The patients all passed away last month, and all but one of those patients were linked to long-term care facilities. 13 new cases were also reported in Allegheny County. The state is also reporting five new cases in Beaver and Butler counties and two new cases in Westmoreland County. A big day tomorrow. Most of the Pittsburgh area goes green. And today we're getting a look at what will change at restaurants. Channel 11's Amy Marcinkowicz shows us what you can expect when you walk in for a bite to eat. Restaurants are ready to open here in Butler County, but once you come inside, it will be a whole new feel. Look at these tables. Every other one will be marked off. We visited Zupa's restaurant here in Cranberry Township the day they and all other restaurants were ordered to shut down inside dining. That was almost three months ago. They got by on takeout orders. We came back to see how they are preparing to go green on Friday. We're fortunate that the community just stepped up and kept coming and getting the takeouts every day. So. Um, um, we're happy. We're happy with what, how it progressed, and now we're happy to get back to normalcy. Another mom-and-pop shop in this plaza, Freedom Square Diner, marking off every other table. Restaurants can only have 50% capacity, and there won't be any shareable condiments on the tables. And what's your message to your customers? We cannot wait to have you guys back. Uh, we missed you greatly, and we are greatly looking forward to seeing you guys on Friday. Fans of these restaurants know things are going to be a little bit different, but we'll continue to support small businesses. We like their food, and they're nice people here. It's kind of sad that, you know, nobody's working, and just have to do what we have to do. The fountain drink right here, it will be off limits. People will be able to buy bottled drinks. Another thing Zupas is doing is they won't be using regular utensils. For just a couple of weeks, they're going to give people disposable utensils. Amy Marsikowicz, Channel 11 News. Casinos are preparing to reopen, but they're going to wait a few days. The Rivers Casino will open its doors at 9 a.m. on Tuesday. The Rivers will have new hours to do deep cleaning every day, and everyone will be required to wear masks. The Meadows Casino in Washington County will also reopen Tuesday. The Meadows says it's working with state regulators and health officials as it prepares to reopen. A racially charged encounter in Westview led to two people being charged and video of it was circulating online. Under my property, get out of here. <laughs> get! Dozens of people protested yesterday outside the bar where this encounter happened. Westview police say Dan Eberhardt called Dean Smith the N-word, then came toward him while he was carrying a hammer. Alex Simmons owns a gym next door to the bar. He's the one who posted that video that Smith took. Simmons says he's concerned about the safety of his clients because he's had problems with the same bar employee. I did call the police. They did come and take my statement. Um, he did call me the N-word before. I did not have footage of it. 
Eberhardt denies that, but he told Channel 11 he's sorry for using the racial slur in the video. He says he felt he was being harassed. He and Smith, the man who recorded it, have both been charged. Leaders at Pitt are addressing race and justice after the death of George Floyd. The school held an emergency town hall meeting yesterday. It was part of Pitt's town hall series called This Is Not Normal. Panelists talked about taking action by identifying what's wrong, talking about it, and committing to making change. It is time to take action. And those actions will require work from all of us, no matter what the hue of our skin. So that one day you and I authentically can say, my country, tis of thee, sweet land. Pittsburgh police say if you see something that's wrong, call 911, record it, and bring wrongdoings to light. Walmart is moving firearms and ammunition out of some of its U.S. stores. The company says it is making the move out of an abundance of caution as protests continue. Many businesses, including Target, were damaged or looted during the unrest. The items are still available for sale, but they're being kept in secure rooms. That move, they tell us, is only temporary. With unemployment at its worst level in decades, competition is as fierce as ever for people hoping to find a new job. And now some job seekers are turning to paid online services to maximize their odds. NBC's Chris Pallone has more on the job search help. Competition is fierce for many Americans looking for jobs, and sometimes the smallest detail can be the key to rejoining the workforce. One of my interns said, hey, what are you going to do about resumes? And I was like, there's a resume issue. Jennifer Sethry of Entry Careers discovered 75% of resumes submitted for a job will never be seen by someone who works there. There are 127 metrics for reasons why your resume doesn't get through applicant tracking system software. Things like length, font size, and a lack of certain key words can cause good candidates to be rejected. That's why some job seekers are turning to paid services like Entry, learning to craft carefully targeted resumes. I think with creating a brand statement for yourself so you know exactly who you are. V Candidates founder LT Bryson says job seekers must be memorable. Her company creates profiles for clients, reviews resumes, and even coaches them through mock interviews. Remember a few months ago, we had more jobs than we had talent. Well, now with all of the layoffs and furloughs, we're going to have less jobs and more talented people in the marketplace. And when job seekers feel like no one understands what they're going through, Wisdo.com introduces them to people who have been in their shoes. Uh, people who uh, are, you know, in social networks, they have their own personal networks, and still they can't find people to talk about what matters most in their lives. You have to be your own advocate. Bottom line, these employment experts say putting the best possible shine on job skills and qualifications is more important than ever before. Chris Pallone, NBC News. Thousands of mail-in ballots slowed our primary election results. One county's plan to speed things up before the big November election. News is committed to covering the reopening of our area, bringing you what's happening now. Local leaders told us they are confident we'll get the green light later today. What's new? Big news for restaurants with outdoor seating. The Pittsburgh Diocese just announced they are allowing only 25% capacity. And what's next with experts weighing in? Online toolkit full of best practices for reopening. Here's what changes in the green phase. As you can see right here, we broke it all down for you. Count on Channel 11 Morning News for live coverage every morning.
Channel 11 News at 5, covering more news happening in Allegheny County. Westmoreland County officials say they need to find a way to count ballots faster before November's general election because it took them an extra day to count every primary ballot. Gordon, can you take over? Yeah, the main reason was because 40,000 of those were mail-in ballots. That's more than half of all votes cast in Westmoreland County on Tuesday. Officials told our partners at the Trib they've discussed adding more staff and possibly uh, buying or leasing additional scanners. They'll also lobby to change a state law that prevents mail-in ballots from being opened prior to Election Day. Voter turnout is expected to double for that election coming up in November. The world's biggest movie theater chain says it may fall victim to the pandemic. AMC, which runs theaters throughout the area, said it doubts it can remain in business in its current state. The chain says it has enough money to reopen this summer or later, but they're not sure beyond that. AMC expects to face problems even after governments lift stay-at-home orders and restrictions because studios aren't releasing many new films right now, so there isn't a big reason to head to the movies. People coming from other countries, other, other states, just into small-town Latrobe. The Steelers will not spend their summer training at St. Vincent, and businesses are missing out. Why those bottom lines aren't the only victims. And I'm tracking a thunderstorm moving through Lawrence County. We've got some lightning now, some heavy rain, and I've got updated tracking on that and your humidity forecast still to come. WPXI now. When a major story breaks, this is where you'll find 24-hour coverage. From the Channel 11 newsroom to our crews live in the field, we'll bring you the information you need right now. WPXI now. Always on when you want the latest on breaking news. find anything else like the breaking news desk in Pittsburgh. You're going to get breaking news as it's happening. We have an anchor now dedicated to following the latest information as it comes in. That is a resource no one else has. If you see me on the breaking news desk, you know it's an important story. Channel 11 News at 5, covering more news happening in Beaver County. Scenes like this won't play out at St. Vincent College this summer, and businesses in Latrobe will take a hit. Steelers training camp is going to be held instead on Pittsburgh's south side because of the coronavirus, and that's a big loss for Westmoreland County. Our Westmoreland County Bureau Chief, Melanie Gillespie, went to Latrobe to see how businesses and owners of those businesses are dealing with the loss. 
For the first time in 50 years, it appears the Steelers will not be coming out to St. Vincent College for training camp. It is a long storied history here for the Steelers, and the businesses in Latrobe are really going to be feeling the impact from this. I've talked to so many people that plan their vacations around Steeler camp. Lake Trobe will be lacking the fanfare in the sea of black and gold this year that usually descends on this town every July when the Steelers hit training camp. And the impact on area businesses will be filling the strain even more. The hotels get hit, the, the stores get hit, everything gets a revenue generation of probably 30 to 40 percent more whenever the Steelers are here in town. I think it's going to be a major impact on the whole community, not just us. I mean, it's usually a 40 percent increase in business for Steeler camp from all the people that come visit from all over the country. An ESPN NFL insider report came down yesterday saying the league is requiring teams to hold camp in their private practice facilities this year. The Steelers organization said they haven't heard from the NFL directly about having to stay in the South Side this year, but businesses here already devastated by the pandemic say this is just another blow. But a lot of people, they never get to go to a game. So the only time they get to see the Steelers are here at La Trobe. So that's also a, a big issue that I'm sure it's going to affect everybody. Even the college says it'll miss seeing the thousands of Steelers faithful this year. The president of St. Vincent said in part, we understand the NFL's decision that requires teams to hold training camp at their own facilities. We look forward to their return next summer and pray for the health, safety and success of the entire organization as they prepare for the upcoming season. We'll push through it and everything will be fine and we'll hope that 2021 won't, won't be as abrasive as 2020. The Chamber of Commerce says they are sad and disappointed by this. They say it generates a lot of money for the Latrobe Laurel Valley area. They're looking forward to welcoming the Steelers back in 2021. Reporting in Latrobe, I'm Melanie Gillespie for Channel 11 News. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Well, good afternoon. Back with another beautiful sunrise picture. This one coming in from Amy. And this is a picture that really uh, has looked a lot like the ones we've had this morning coming in with all the beautiful colors in the sky with the orange shaded colors and the reds and had some purples and pinks out there. So thanks to Amy for sending that one in. Here's Storm Tracker Doppler 11 radar. Let you get you caught up on what's going on out there right now. You can see some heavier rain through northeastern Lawrence County and parts of Mercer County. That's going to continue to move up toward the Northeast actually did have some lightning with it. Looks like it's weakened just a little bit, but Clintonville heads up for you 114 this afternoon. Some potential heavy rain. Upper 70s out there right now. We're on our way to the 80s. It's definitely a warm one for us once again. Our dew points are in the low to middle 60s, which means it's humid. The higher the number, the more moisture we have in the atmosphere. More humid it feels to us. This afternoon, upper uh, 70s to low 80s through 2 o'clock, and then 81 at 5. Keep in mind, we are forecasting a chance for shower and thunderstorms this afternoon. You're going to want to stay weather aware. So if you are doing a little grilling, you might want to do that uh, favorite the lunch hour maybe right now because that's the timing that looks a little bit best to do that. Here's our storm tracker maps this afternoon. 3 o'clock, you can see some heavier storms up through Lawrence and Beaver counties. And this is the latest model data I have coming in. Showers and storms forecast by mid to late afternoon. And we're going to continue that threat into this evening as well. And uh, so basically mid-afternoon into the evening hours is when we expect some thunderstorms across the area and I actually just looked at some new information right before I stepped on camera and it looks like the Storm Prediction Center out in Oklahoma is giving our area a 95% chance that a watch will be issued because of uh, the chance of severe weather today so just wanted to update you guys on that so in the next couple of minutes to a couple of hours we're going to be tracking that and there could be a watch that's issued for severe weather so make sure you have our weather app and you'll get that alert right on your cell phone here's a look at our rainfall forecast now, this is one particular model, and it's going to give you an idea of how much rain will fall. Keep in mind, this is going to be uh, based on where the storms form and how many train over the same spots or move over the same spots, if you will. So this is giving you an idea, but not necessarily the exact amount. Just know that we could be looking at some pretty heavy rain out of those storms today, a quick quarter to a half an inch of rain. And if you get repeated rounds, it could add up pretty quickly and will carry rain chances into Friday and Saturday as well. So that's why it was all the way out through Saturday. Tonight, mid 60s, tomorrow back in the 80s, another humid day, the five day forecast, isolated shower and thunderstorms for the day Friday. 
It looks like we're going to have a little shower activity on Saturday morning with 81 degrees, then clearing, and then Sunday, mostly sunny 75. Sunny and Monday of next week looking good with uh, 79, and the temperatures are going to be cooling into the 50s as we head into Sunday and Monday morning. And guys, you know, I was looking ahead to some long range data. It looks like we could be approaching 90 as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. But stay weather aware today. That's pretty warm, Danielle. Thank you. Parks in Cranberry Township are ready to reopen this weekend. All areas will open tomorrow, and that means the gates will be lifted and most of the restrooms will be available. You will be able to use fields, playgrounds, and fitness equipment again, but they do not want people to gather in crowds, and they would like for you to bring some hand sanitizer and use it often. Amazon is getting ready for summer when its big summer sale is set to start and how much you can save coming up. Hi, I'm Lisa Robertson here with Local Steals and Deals and guess what you're watching me on? Yeah, it's a blue screen. You woke up this morning, you checked your phone, blue screen. You're video conferencing into work, blue screen. You're checking something on your iPad, blue screen. You're watching TV or video or you're streaming your favorite movie, blue screen. You're playing video games, blue screen. You get the idea. We just go from one blue screen to another all day long, especially right now. So, have you ever noticed that, oh my gosh, I'm getting headaches in the afternoon, my eyes are tired and irritated, right? All of the blue screen glare really gets to your eyes and it actually has an effect on how you sleep, not just how you feel when you're awake. So Felix Gray is a fabulous company that has a proprietary design of lens that's gonna be a blue light lens that gives you really clear vision. They have great styles for men, they have great styles for women, and now you can actually help make your eyes happy, not have those headaches, not have the issues with sleep because you're wearing these amazing blue light glasses. And here's the best part you can actually get them as readers, okay? So you can get them in a, in a magnification up to 2.5, so no more choosing, but wait, I need readers, but wait, I need blue light. Oh my gosh, they're all in one. Lots of great styles, really great quality. I love how they feel on the air and the fact that one style is a very different personality than another. Why struggle when you can look this good and get this much satisfaction with your eyes? Felix Gray is a company that does amazing quality frames, lenses, and cases, and you can find these at 17% off on localsteals.com. So this is an idea of finding great things for you that are really gonna make a difference in your quality of life and giving them to you at an amazing price that you won't find anywhere else. I love knowing that what I'm doing with my eyes is protecting them, the styles are gonna look great, the quality is going to be amazing. And one of the things I want to mention, if you wear readers just like I do, you need a whole bunch of pairs because they need to be everywhere in the house. All right, localsteals.com, just one of the great ideas we have for you. From the beginning. The first two cases of the coronavirus. The coronavirus is taking its toll on our region. Channel 11 has kept you informed, giving you the facts. I am declaring a state of emergency. Schools in Pennsylvania will be closing. Unemployment continues to rise. With a team you can trust, digging for new details. Brighton Rehab, bringing in the National Guard. How exactly this Reopening started. Reopening Pennsylvania will be done regionally. As our city reopens, Channel 11 News will cover everything happening in our area because we are coverage you can count on.
storm. The seven day forecast now on your screen all the time on Channel 11 News. Amazon has set a date for its summer sale event. The goal is to give a boost for sellers feeling the impacts of the coronavirus pandemic. It's also in response to the delay of the company's annual Prime Day event. The fashion summer sale event begins June 22nd. It's expected to run anywhere from seven to 10 days. The company asked sellers to submit deals for items with a discount of at least 30%. The block at Northway kicks off its weekly farmer's market. It opens tomorrow and will be every Friday at 3. You can find local produce, meats, cheeses, flowers, gifts. And this year, there will also be food trucks. The market will be around until October 30th. Talk about a room with a view here. The, this hotel room on the edge of the Swiss Alps. And people are signing up to stay in the wallless room created by two conceptual artists. One night costs $306. It comes complete with a white-gloved modern butler. Not sure what that means, but... Uh Wow. Might be trouble if it's going to rain. By the Looks way, gorgeous. Daniel just told me uh, that uh, the National Weather Service has issued a severe thunderstorm watch until 8 o'clock tonight. So keep an eye on that severe Weather Team 11 app for the latest. And that's all for Channel 11 News at noon. We'll see you again tonight at 5. All right. Have a good day. is happening in your neighborhood, Channel 11 News is there. We're in McCandless, Cranberry, and Butler. We cover news everywhere you live, not just downtown. We're in Aliquippa, Coriopolis, and Moon. Bringing you stories that impact your town. That's what makes Channel